Okay, so thank you so much for joining us today. Um, why don't you tell them your name and what you do? Yeah, um, so my name is Dr. Sonia Daniels. I am the founder and president of S. Daniels Consulting. Um, we call it SDC for short because S. Daniels Consulting is a lot to say, um, but we're a strategy consulting firm. We've been around almost seven years um, and we serve a lot of different types of clients. So anywhere from nonprofits to uh, medium-sized businesses to corporations. And then we're also looking at how we can serve individuals of high net worth. So think about um, maybe athletes who want to start nonprofits and need a strategic advisor. Right. Um, those are just some of the services that we offer. What would you say inspired you to start this business? What was what was the, the passion behind it? Oh, so many things. <laughs> um, so I think the biggest thing that shifted me or I, honestly, I would say pushed me into entrepreneurship was that there was just a certain lifestyle I was seeking and not necessarily around money, but more so of just like having autonomy and like freedom to kind of live life the way I wanted to, right. like on my own terms. And so because I come from the public sector, I did a lot of nonprofit and government work. There wasn't always like flexibility at the job. Right. So like right. needing to take days off was a process. Or like if I had a family emergency, it was difficult to just like up yeah. and leave, right? Yeah, of course. And so like I really just wanted a lifestyle where I could focus on like just living life without like, you know, just the harsh boundaries of a job. Um, and so eventually I got to a point where I was like, let me figure out what this looks like. Now, mind you, I'm a first generation business owner. So I know wow. I knew nothing about business initially. I don't know. I just started kind of figuring out how do I make enough money to replace my salary? Mm -hmm. And it ultimately got to a point where I was making more money in a month than like my salary for my job. Um, and so for me, that was like a key point of like, maybe I just need to step out and figure out business and what does that look like? And so I've been doing that now for six years and it's been a really good experience. Right. That's awesome. Thank you. Um, so I heard you kind of talk about how it was a struggle. Um, and I think all entrepreneurs kind of face this, uh, you know, roadblock of mm -hmm. I have this great idea and I want to do something with it, but I don't have all the tools or I've hit something difficult and now I'm struggling. Mm -hmm. um, what would you say was the biggest like pivot in your business where Ooh. something difficult happened? You were like, okay, I'm going to keep persevering yeah. and like, I'm going to pivot and do something else. Oh, just last week. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the funny thing about business is that I tell people all the time, it's an iterative process, right? So like you'll never have it figured out. Mm -hmm. And I mean, honestly, that's just life in general. Like I'm almost 40 and I'm like, just when I think I have it figured out, then something <laughs> happens. I'm like, dang, I got to start over again, you know? <laughs> Nobody so think, has it figured <laughs> right? out. Right, <laughs> and you'll never have it figured out, especially because like as you navigate life, like you learn new things and so it makes you want to explore different things, right? And it's no different with business. So for me, what I knew in year one is completely different from what I know almost in year seven. And so there's those create perfect opportunities to pivot or sometimes like it might not need to be a whole pivot. It might just need to be a little swivel, like, right. you know, a little yeah. baby step to the right <laughs> or something. Um, and so just for me last week, I had an issue with a client that essentially made me so uncomfortable. It forced me to really refine our business strategy to decide wow. if what we're doing actually makes sense. Um, and so, I mean, there are always situations that come up like that, that kind of force me to take a step back and be like, does this make sense for me? Does this make sense for my lifestyle? But does it make sense for the people that we ser we're serving, right? Because if it doesn't make sense to them, then we don't have customers. Right. Um, so, I mean, every week is like an opportunity to like pivot um, based on information that we learn throughout the journey of the business. Yeah. Do you feel like the staying alive mindset of entrepreneurship resonates with you? And if so, yeah. like, how do you feel that? Yeah, I mean, definitely. So like, I mean, there's a for me, I feel like 
when people go into business, there's a certain type of enthusiasm that you have to have for it because people can tell if you don't like what you're doing, yeah. especially as a business owner. So like the whole theme of brew and like the staying alive theme is so perfect because like you just have to have that excitement in your business to be able to like have a good culture in the business yeah. for your customers to be excited about it. But ultimately, like that excitement takes us through the difficult times in business. Um, so I would definitely say the theme is super perfect for like just being a business owner. So yeah, that's kind of what goes into the pivot too. You mm. know, of like I've hit this point mm. where uh, I'm growing, but I have to start making adjustments and I have to you know keep persevering, keep staying mm. alive, and yep. you know keep the BGS. <laughs> yes, <laughs> um, and put on some disco pants and like dance a yeah, little bit. You just know? keep going. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so have you always? wanted to be an entrepreneur or have you had the entrepreneurial spirit since you were a kid? Mm. What are some, you know, journeys that yeah. have come from that? <laughs> this is a funny question because so educationally, I didn't know entrepreneurship was an option. Right. Mm -hmm. And I say that because I have three degrees. And so for me, I thought that the journey was you go to college, you get a good job, you stay there, you know, five right. many years and then you retire. And then that is the what American the, you, dream. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then you get out into the world and you're like, this does not work the way people, you know, make it seem right. Mm -hmm. And especially when you start to think about like the different nuances of every person's situation. So for me, again, I'm a first generation, like everything, first person to go to college, first person wow. to, you know, start a business. So I didn't have a blueprint or a roadmap. So for yeah. me, I've always been in a space of like, what makes the most sense? And so like always figuring it out. And so I never knew like owning a business was something I could do and actually do it well. My goal was actually to be a professor, right? And so mm -hmm. I thought that was like, go get a PhD, go be a professor and then do that. Well, there's so many politics and academics that like that journey is not easy for just every single person, right? But now that I'm in business, I essentially get to be a professor, but in a non-traditional way. I get right. to teach my clients. I get to teach my staff. I get to teach myself, you know? <laughs> yeah. So it's like, I still get to do what I desire. It just didn't look the way I thought it would. Yeah. But when I think about childhood, I think there was always something I probably was getting into and I didn't necessarily make the connection that it was being like, or having an entrepreneurial spirit. Mm -hmm. um, but I've always been a very curious person. I've always been a person who kind of like, always went right when people were going left. Like I'm super nonconformist yeah. in a lot of ways. Um, and so all of those things really work well in business ownership, right? right? Because like I have to figure it out because I don't necessarily have someone giving me the answers. And so that curiosity really helps me in this journey um, of growing a business. Cause I'm always wanting to know, like, am I missing something? What should I be doing right now? Mm -hmm. You know, so I'm just always finding opportunities yeah. to learn. So and so you're in the Baton Rouge area yes. uh, and you know what it looks like in the community here. Mm -hmm. What would you say is like the most important thing for an entrepre entrepreneur to know yes. if they're living in Baton Rouge? Yeah, that's a good question. So because I am a transplant, so I'm from a small town called Franklin, Louisiana. Okay. Um, I don't know if you've ever been there. Never been. <laughs> it is in the middle of nowhere in a sugarcane field, okay. which is a really cool place. But being here has been very interesting because I tell people that people do business with people, right? So mm -hmm. like you can have the most amazing business, you can be doing all the most fabulous things, but you have to know people and people have to right. know you and you have to be able to build relationships with people in order for them to know, like, and trust you to want to do business. So my thing is like finding spaces that make sense for me to be able to be comfortable to build relationships with people, knowing how you like to network. So like finding events here in Baton Rouge that kind of just meet like what makes you comfortable. So I'm a person, I'm more, I fall more introverted, right? So I prefer like small, intimate gatherings. So this works well for me. But then if there was a conference of like a thousand people, too that's too much. <laughs> like that is way too much for me. So I try to find spaces here in Baton Rouge where like I can naturally build mm. organic relationships with people. And then we just hang out, go get dinner, go get a drink, right. um, things of that nature. And then also what I love about Baton Rouge are all the events. So like um live after five like a lot of concerts and stuff 
those are actually untapped opportunities for networking because people sometimes separate business from personal. And I'm mm-hmm. like, it's all intertwined, right? Yep. So you might go to live after five and sit next to someone and y'all start talking. And before you know it, y'all actually do the same type of business. Yeah. And now you have a business relationship. So it's like thinking about like opportunities to get to know people in spaces where it's not naturally seen as like networking spaces. Yeah. And I love mm-hmm. that you said that because I hate, <laughs> when people say, you know, I just, I want separation of, I would need a work-life balance, mm-hmm. personal work-life balance. Mm-hmm. I'm like, there is no There's separation. No separation. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, they all, like each one affects the yes. other. If yeah. you have one cup that's empty, the yeah. other one's not going to be filled up. Mm-hmm. It's like, they're all intertwined. And yeah. so I, I just think that's so false when yeah. people... Um, you know, when you're interviewing for a company or you're starting mm-hmm. your business and you're hiring clients and they're like, mm-hmm. I like that balance. It's like, you know, work's <laughs> going to affect you either way, but yeah. you know, it is important to unwind and yeah. get your rest when needed. Definitely. And I mean, even like what I love about Louisiana is like the sports culture, right? Mm. So even like going to like a football game or a baseball game is a perfect opportunity to like get to know people because now you have already figured out y'all have a shared interest, but like, mm. let me learn more about you and see like, are there opportunities for us to connect regardless if it's like work yeah. or personal? For so, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I think that is the cool thing about Baton Rouge, too, mm. is you have people here who want to know yeah. you. And it's not just for a connection level. Mm. It is on a friendly level, too. Mm. Um, so it's more intimate, and it makes yeah. doing work with people so much easier. It does, because then you can talk about sports and stuff, you know? Yeah, <laughs> Like in course. between meetings. <laughs> yeah. Um, so now for the real question. Oh. <laughs> What's your favorite place to eat in Baton Rouge? Oh, favorite <laughs> place to eat. Saigon Noodles on the corner of Florida and Sherwood is my favorite place to eat. Okay. And I usually go there by myself. They play the best music. Really? Yes. And their pho is oh, so phenomenal. Mm. Um, so I <laughs> there are other pho places that I've been to in Baton Rouge, but None Don't compare. Go to Saigon. Okay. Yeah, Saigon Noodles is my favorite place in Baton Rouge. Never been. You but should go. I'll have to try it. I'm not really a fun girl, yes. but maybe I'll have to become yeah, one. Yeah, their fun is the best. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. All right. That was fun. Well, thank you so much for joining <laughs> thank you. us. I, I enjoyed that. Good. <laughs>